Shane, appreciate your time. Hope you're doing well. Um, I'm going to ask you right out of the gate just about DeAndre Walker, just what you have seen from him since he's been with the squad, what he's been doing this offseason, and maybe what kind of expectations do you have for him heading into 2020? Yeah, man, I think uh, he's been making the most of the situation in terms of learning um, in this virtual world that we're in right now. Um, he's asking good questions. He's engaged. Uh, I think the big thing for him is once we get back, it's just taking it from what we're doing right now to the field and continuing to develop all the technique and fundamentals. But I'm excited about him. I think football is important to him. Um, I think he's very anxious to get going and see where he falls in this thing and compete and try to earn a spot. And I'm going to ask you one more about Kamala Correa. Uh, he said he's been working uh, with the boxing coach to work with his footwork and his hands and his cardio and said that maybe that was an area or a point of emphasis for him look forward on what he can do to get better. Is that something you talk to him about? And, and what do you see room for improvement with him heading into this season? Yeah, I think uh, we've always talked about coordinated movements. Like when you try to rush the passer, you got to be able to have your hands, your hips, your feet, all kind of in sync. Um, and that's been an area for him that we've kind of been working on trying to get those a little bit more in sync where everything's a little bit more natural to him um, in terms of rushing to give himself a chance to kind of get on edges and capture and do some of those things. Um, but I, I've been pleased with him in these meetings too. I think he's taken on a little bit of a leadership role, which we need in our room. Um, I mean, he had a great year last year, but obviously last year is over trying to build on it. And he's trying to carve out his role again whatever that might be, whatever's asked of him. But I'm pleased with kind of his his uh, approach right now, leadership-wise, in our room. Uh, John Glennon. Hey, Shane. Um, I know you haven't really been able to get, uh, I guess, up close and personal much with, with Vic Beasley, but just maybe wondering what your thoughts um, have been, maybe just from watching uh, clips and, and maybe getting to know him from afar, and, and what do you expect him to bring uh, to the table for the Titans. Yeah, I'm excited about it. Obviously, with his history, he's led the league in sacks. Um, he's had success doing it. I think our goal was to get him back to that level, um, to where he's impacting the game on third down for us. And then ultimately, he's got to do some stuff on first, second down. That's the one thing Wake didn't really provide as much for us last year, where I think <clears throat> bringing in a guy like Vic, who's younger, um, who's plays in first, second down, obviously, that's a big aspect too is kind of developing him there, um, learning what we do, how he's going to fit in that role. Uh, but I'm excited about him. I'm excited what he brings. I think he, much like Harold in terms of third down rushing, he's he's got his fastball off the edge, and then just trying to figure out ways to help ourselves defensively with him and Harold out there, um, and whoever else kind of emerges. That's kind of where we're at right now, but I'm excited to have him here. He's been he's been good. He's been engaged. Uh, been really had some time to meet with him one on one to get to know him a little bit uh, and kind of go in a little bit more detail because he's the one guy that hasn't been here. So everything's kind of new to him. The terminology, all these other guys were we're 300 level, 400 level. Where him, it's kind of starting from ground zero, and it's more just equating terminology right now. It just maybe a follow up. Uh, there's been a you know the popular uh, uh, clowny watch going on here for quite some time. I uh, just wondered if you could talk a little bit about you know your experience with him in Houston and you know if he does wind up here, how much of a uh, you know how much of a good fit might that be you know with somebody in a system that he is familiar with here? Yeah, man. Um, obviously, worked with JD for a few years and. Uh, enjoyed working with them. I have no idea what's going to happen. I haven't between Braves, between J-Rob, obviously they make those decisions and his name hasn't even came across my desk. Um, I'm not really, it's above my pay scale, so to speak. I coach the guys that really get here. Um, but just in terms of familiarity, anytime you got a guy that's familiar with the system, I don't care who it is at any position. I think it kind of speeds the process up for him in terms of making the transition. But, um, Right now, man, I'm focused on the guys that are here and we'll kind of see how things work out. But um, we're trying to figure this thing out with the guys we got in the room right now. Uh, Luke. Hey, Shane, I wanted to ask if uh, you know, Mike has said that he's not 
entirely clear on who's going to be calling defensive plays. I was wondering if you could maybe shed some light on, have you all as a staff had discussions about that? Is there any sort of general direction on that front? I mean, honestly, we don't got to call play till mid-August in the first preseason. Um, so it hasn't been a lot of discussion about that at this point. Um, we have been working through the playbook, working through all this stuff uh, under Brave's uh, leadership and working through this thing, get, has getting midget brought up to speed, um, all the new guys. And I think that's kind of going to be one of those things that plays itself out uh, ultimately with Braves and what he can handle, what he needs help with. And our jobs as assistant coaches to coach our guys and then help the head coach with whatever he needs. And that's what I'm trying to do right now. That's what has just trying to do. That's what Midge is trying to do. We're all trying to ultimately make our position groups the best they can be. And then whatever Braves needs us to do in terms of expanding our roles uh, to help him with what he's taking on, that's kind of where we're at right now. Uh, Paul Kaharski. Hey, Shane. Um, what's it been like uh, also getting to know Hazlitt kind of from afar and um, what changes between the marriage of inside and outside maybe with uh, with his voice now? Yeah, um, it's been great getting to know Haz. Uh, much like Dean, in my experience, just working with him, soaking up everything I can from him. Um, he's been in the league a long time. He played in the league. He's seen it all. So very similar to how it was with Dean, like nothing really surprises him. He's got different perspectives on things. Um, and that's really been beneficial, I think, to us as a defensive staff. And it's been really beneficial for me, um, just in terms of how I can relate it to my guys. Uh, in terms of us working together, like, I mean, there's things, but ultimately we're two different positions, almost. To be honest, I think my group correlates more with the D line than it does the inside linebackers. You know, so I mean, there's times we got to do things together, um, but in terms of tie to him, like I mean, we're kind of our own position group anyway. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Corey Curtis. Hey, coach. Thanks for joining us. Um, wanted to get back to Vic uh, quickly here. When, when you look at the player he was when he led the league in sacks and the player he's been the last couple of seasons, what's the major difference and, and what bridge do you have to gap to get him back there? Yeah, I think anytime, man, <clears throat> when you look at the production, there's a lot of different things that kind of go into that. Um, I mean, everybody gets some elevated production at times. Everybody doesn't get the production that they probably deserve at times. It goes both ways. Um, but to me, it's consistency, like just play in, play out, playing with great effort, playing with fundamentals, all those things we preach, all those things that are that we try to drill into our guys, uh, the little things, man, I think it comes down, that's ultimately where the production ends up, is just being able to do it, play in and play out and go from there, focusing on those things. And then that's our job, man. We got to put them in positions and make plays and do what they do best, you know, like we're, we're not going to ask him to do something that he doesn't do, doesn't do well. Like we're going to try to put him and all these other players in positions where they can produce and kind of use their skill sets to their advantage. Uh, Teron. Coach Bo, I hope all is well. As far as Derek Roberson is concerned, what are some of the things, because he came on strong towards the end, what are some things that he could do to kind of get to be a regular in that rotation and be a guy you guys can depend on? Yeah, I mean, Roby's from the gate flash ability to rush the passer. Um, I think the main thing with him right now, it's almost like what I just went into, but consistency and ultimately his development being a first, second down player. Like the run game, some of that type of stuff, taking the next step there is really has, has been what's held him back a little bit in terms of that play time. Um, but he definitely adds value on third down in passing situations. But I think the first, second down stuff in terms of scheme, understanding, and the technique, which he's come a long way. He really has, and he's bought in, and he's dialed in this offseason. Um, but that's, I mean, that's 
kind of one of the did more disappointing things about not having this off season, like year one to year two, like you saw with Harold, some of these other guys, like that off season is huge for development. Um, yeah. And that's where we're going to have to strive to hopefully get caught back up. Hopefully these guys are doing what they say they're doing in terms of working out and all the drills and all that type of stuff. But that's, that's going to be a challenge for us. And that's something that we're going to have to continue to stress probably more so even going into the season than what we normally do um, in terms of time allotment, just because of this, uh, not being able to do this off season. And obviously everyone would love to have the lead leader in sacks, but I mean, is there something that could be said to having a rotation of guys who had the potential to, you know, get up to 10 sacks or possibly more? No doubt, man. We never want to turn really good pass rushers. The more you give me, the better off we are. Um, I get, like, it's our job. Whoever it is, the best rusher should be out on the field on third down. However, we got to figure it out. And the best cover guys should be out there too. Like, we got to find ways to affect the quarterback. Um, and we're going to make that decision really based on who gives us the best chance to affect the quarterbacks going to be out there. So I, I can't sit here and tell you it's going to look like it did last year or if it's going to look completely different. Like there's a lot of things that kind of as we get our hands on guys and get a feel for how we're meshing, um, how we best feel like we can complement each other, what group best complements each other. That's kind of how we evolve. That's our job as coaches is really to get these guys, figure out what works best with who we got and put them in a position to make plays. Uh, Teresa Walker. Uh, Shane, one thing that uh, you have the benefit of is a lot of these guys are back from last year, but uh, in, in with these Zoom sessions, are you able to do bonding through these periods or is it just all football technique and things like that? Yeah, as much as I want to be all football and technique, these guys, I think they like to take 15, 20 minutes off of the meeting just talking. So, I mean, it's all good. We do all that stuff. Uh, we try to do different things, play games, have competitions, uh, be creative with how we're teaching, how these guys are learning. Um, but it's funny, like whenever we get them in a group setting between position groups, whether it's DBs, ILBs, or D-line, OLBs, like usually the first 10 or 15 minutes of them just catching up and hounding one another. So, I mean, there is that point, uh, that part of it, Obviously, it's not the same as if you're in the facility, which we're going to do some different things next week to see if we can try to get these guys a little bit more um, engaged together just across these meetings. But that is a challenge with it. But they, they, they're they enjoying each other's company on here. They're, it's almost no different than a meeting room. Once we kind of get into it and get going, like I'm hounding them, they're hounding me, they're joking back and forth. And then when it's time to learn, they're focused and locked in. So I think that's all kind of part of the teaching and learning environment. Terry McCormick. Shane, last year, Harold Landry went through a stretch where he had a sack in five games in a row. Then down the stretch, he went the last four games and, and didn't have any sacks. Was that a matter of teams starting to key on him more or did he wear down a little bit? And, and what do you do to, I guess, span that out over more of the course of the season this year? Yeah, I think that's a, that's a good question. I think it's all those factors that you kind of mentioned, whether he was a little more noticed and then obviously we're down. He, play, he played a lot of plays for us, man. He did probably too much, and that's on me. Um, but we got to find ways to get some other guys that can take some stuff off of them too, and I got to get those guys developed where we – are willing and trusting them, putting them in the game where we feel like they can make plays for us. Um, but I think it was a combination of things. I think he is still adamant about developing his body, his strength, his stamina, all of those things. But in my mind, he, he played too many plays. Um, I got to do a better job of not putting so much on him in terms of play count. And hopefully we get him at his best when we need him at his best down the stretch. We got time for a couple more uh, before Coach Hazlitt joins us. Uh, Eric, hey Shane, uh, you've kind of talked a little bit about um, the challenges of, of this off season, uh, but this would really obviously be a valuable time for getting your hands on a new player like Vic Beasley. Is it any harder to build that individual rapport with a new guy? Uh, and, and you kind of touched on it earlier when you asked about him, but how how dialed in is he and how receptive has he been in the meetings? 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's an adjustment for him. Um, just in his shoes, like he's walking into this thing, not knowing anybody, having to learn in a unique way, um, really having to get to know these guys through Zoom and going through this stuff. So like it, it is challenging for him and I get that. Um, I do think once he, we get back in the facility, it is gonna be easier on him to kind of learn and get to walk through and do some of those things that we're missing out on now. Um, but in terms of our relationship, um, any guy that comes in here, it doesn't just happen overnight. Um, I would say it is unique in this situation, but we talk, we're on the phone, we communicate, we, we meet one-on-one, -on -one, which I think has kind of further developed our relationship a little bit to this point. Um, but obviously I, I think it's going to speed up between me and him and between him and the other players once we get back in the facility and he can kind of, kind of get around and he, he gets a little bit more comfortable with everything instead of all this virtual stuff. Uh, Jim Wyatt. Shane, I know you've touched on it here in a couple of your answers, but j just the challenge that you've been faced with this off season on trying to get guys to improve their technique, whether it's their hands or their footwork during a season when, during an off season when you hadn't been able to be around them, is there a way you can get a, get some things across to them in Zoom calls and conversations to kind of make up for that? Yeah, so the beautiful thing is we can share video and we can watch and we're watching every little thing and probably go into more detail than we would otherwise. Like, that's the one thing we got with all this. We got time, you know? So it's not like we're scrambling to install 10 calls to go out and practice and then you're kind of catching up on the back end. Like here, we're just installing to get it installed and you can be a little bit more thorough um, in regards to techniques or specific scheme calls um, where you're kind of hitting it front end wise. But I do think pointing all that stuff out on film um, and then being able to relate it to them in terms of drills and techniques and how can you do this on your own? Like we always, I always joke with them, like, don't go buy your, don't go buy a chest shield for your wife. Like just use the field goal folks. Like they don't need that, but just stuff like that, finding ways to be creative doing it. Um, and we got pros, man. We got good guys. I think they're accountable. Um, it's a little bit different than college. Like it's their livelihood. They better be accountable because nobody's waiting for them to catch back up. And I told them day one, like, just because we're not in the building doesn't mean this competition doesn't stop between us and the position meeting room and the active roster and obviously with the other 31 teams. So whatever we got to do to stay ahead and be ahead come whenever we start back up in training camp or whenever that might be, like understand like nobody else is waiting on you. So um, I think they've taken that to heart. I think they are doing things um, to improve. Obviously it is different. Uh, and hopefully when we get back, we'll see kind of the results of that where we can pick back up on the run instead of starting from ground zero. Last one, uh, and then hopefully Coach Hazlitt will be in the room waiting for us. Uh, John Glennon. Shane, uh, I think you referenced it uh, briefly before, but just wondering if you could talk a little bit about the, um, you know, the impact of losing a guy like a Dean Pease with so much uh, experience and wisdom, uh, and also, you know, integrating in some other new assistants too, just sort of the the overall turnover of the defensive staff and, and Dean in particular. Yeah, man, it, uh, I mean, I'm happy Dean got a chance to retire and go enjoy and get away from the stress and the madness of this deal. Um, he meant a lot to me, man. He taught me a lot about this game, about leadership. Um, like I've, I've grown exponentially the past two years in my understanding and, and really in, more than X's and O's, just how to handle people, how to handle players, how to handle other coaches. Um, so he's meant the world to me. I still turn to him. I still ask him questions. He's receptive. He calls me, he texts me. Um, so it was it's difficult losing him, obviously, but I'm happy that he's kind of made his run and we were able to go out on a relatively high note for him, obviously beating some teams that he had coached for. Um, but he's going to be missed. He is, and it's going to take a collective effort to kind of replace him between Braves and the rest of our defensive staff. Um, just 
to replace what he brought and to continue to probably make sure we take some of the things that he instilled in us just in our mindset as we approach game planning and some of those other things. But I think the consistency in our scheme has been huge, especially with how this offseason and playing ended up playing out. Um, Midget has been around us in Houston. He's familiar. Um, he has a different perspective than what Kerry had, which is good. Um, anytime you got different perspectives, it's great. Um, without being said, Kerry's going to be missed too, man. His energy, I don't want to lose sight of that. Like what he brought to the table um, was unique in its own right. Um, but with these guys that we got now, like it's been, it's been pretty seamless. It really has. Uh, and I'm encouraged by it. They're, they're bringing different perspective than kind of what we've all accustomed to the past two years. And I think it's helping us grow as a defensive staff. It's helping us grow in our understanding and talking through things with our players um, and really where this thing's going to end up. But I mean, Haz and Midge and Book, well, really not Book. He's been here, but Eddie coming over, like, I think it's been pretty seamless. And I'm excited to have all of them and work with all of them.